I didn't, nobody had any details because oh, wow. it was an app um, on my brother's phone. Tana is my brother's son. And it was an app mm-hmm. on his phone that notified him oh. that he had been in a high speed car accident. Oh, wow. That's a, the app. It's incredible. The app yeah. calls 911. It notified them. Wow. Um, but nobody knew anything. We hadn't had yeah, a call from the sure. kids or anything. So we, um, so I got in the car and, you know, it was, I knew the road. It was our hometown. And so I just started driving and I didn't know if I was going, I didn't know what I was driving to. Yeah. I didn't know if Corbin was with him. I didn't know if Corbin was right. involved. I didn't right. know how bad my nephew was injured. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just drove and drove until I came across this scene and it was like this tar road turned to dirt. And I was so confused on where I was because mm-hmm. the whole road is tar. Um, and then I saw all the lights, the ambulance and the police. Oh and I parked the car and flew out and ran up to the police officer. And I said, I think my nephew's been in this car accident. They asked names. And I said, he is. He's in the ambulance right there. He's doing okay. And I said, okay. I said, it was my son in the accident. You know, and they asked his name and they said, and his face just completely changed. And he said, oh. he was. And I said, okay, is he in the ambulance too? And he said, no, an ambulance already took him. They're on their way to the hospital. And I said, okay, well, how injured is he? And they said, well, he was alive when he left in the ambulance. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was questionable. Like if he was even going to survive or. And you know what? There's just the way things happened we're just incredible. It's like this, I always say like the stars lined up. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't understand oh, yeah. mm-hmm. how it worked, but our town doesn't have the equipment, um, the jaws of life equipment to get somebody out. Okay. Oh, Another okay. nearby town just happened to be getting off call. Oh, really? They were, they were close enough by, they yeah. showed up with the jaws of life. Um, they were losing Corbin on the way to the hospital and it's probably oh, a 15 minute ride to the hospital. It's, we're not far. Mm-hmm. And, and they had to call another ambulance that was nearby in to get the equipment they needed to keep him alive. Sure. That was close wow. enough. You know, it just, it went on that way the whole time when we called for the helicopter to airlift him out. Mm-hmm. Um, there was none. Yeah. Everybody was booked. We were trying to, wow. we were, we were going three States away trying to get helicopters. Oh my gosh. And some, somebody got canceled hmm. and that helicopter came to us and got to us within an hour. Um, wow. That helicopter had a paramedic on board with um blood which they never carry yeah wow and they all the blood that they had on board they used on corbin's airlift to boston oh because he was losing a ton yeah Yeah. a ton and yeah um wow it was it's amazing that that he was the same blood type you know yeah yep he i think that at the end when it was all said and done um, they finally got finished all of this because that happened for a long time in boston too mm-hmm. i think they said 80 percent of his blood was transfused oh my gosh Whoa. so was he was wow. internal bleeding or he had Every, yes yeah he is when I mean, he had a brain bleed but he had internal bleeding and mm-hmm. he um they had opened him up from the center of his ribs all the way down to his pelvis Oh, um, they had removed organs and they were also swollen and bleeding and like so much internal bleeding that, um, yeah, he had most of it. When I saw the car, I got to the accident scene, the car was still up against the tree mm-hmm. and I was so confused because, um, it looked like a four door car that was a convertible with red interior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And little did I know afterwards that the co- the top was cut off because of the accident oh, and right. it was white leather interior but there was so much blood oh, that man. it looked oh, like man. it was red wow um, yeah. did you ever see the the car corbin or just pictures yeah, they, they, they took pictures right yeah yeah so um, yeah i never saw yeah. the car in person after but yeah it's that's super scary how and do, how does that make you feel sorry i didn't mean to cut you off yeah, yeah. shane um how does that make you feel corbin when you hear like everything that happened because because <laughs> um, yeah. we have like your side of the story but then you're hearing like all the details yeah um like what 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 are your feelings what are your thoughts about that I, it's kind of mind-blowing to me honestly like hearing like all that i've been through i wasn't awake for any of this but right i it, it still helps me in awe how i survived that yeah yeah it's amazing like, looking at the car looking where i was well it was Due to some lucky circumstances, um, like the 
helicopter coming and your cousin holding your head up and Mm -hmm. just amazing that um, the amount of things Mm -hmm. that had to go just right for you to even survive. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. There's so many, like the list goes on, you know, that's, those are the first few that kind of lined up, but Mm -hmm. You know, we had a, we had a lot of those in our favor, thank goodness, because he needed all he could get. Yeah, I mean, for sure. we were t- when I was after he got out of his first surgery at the first hospital he was at, our local hospital. The neurologist and the surgeon came out and they said he has zero brain activity. You need to oh gather the rest of your family and say goodbye because he's not going to make it past today. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's. So how do those phone calls go? Did they have somebody other other people call, or you had to call your other family members and? I I didn't call anybody. Um, we yeah. had quite a few people there. Okay. Luckily, we had another family member, another cousin who um, used to work at Boston Children's Hospital in Boston, mm-hmm. and he said to me, "You need to get him to a level one trauma center. He needs mm-hmm. to go somewhere else." And yeah, so, right. the, to me, the second that they came out and they said he's not going to survive, it was this almost out of body experience. I can picture everything around me. We probably had at least 20 family members that were already at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, And as soon as they said that, there was crying and screaming and Mm -hmm. freaking out. And I've got my younger, my younger children sitting on my lap crying, hearing that their Mm -hmm. brother's, you know, not going to make it. And my brain just went somewhere else. And it was like, this is not happening. (laughs) Mm-hmm. this is, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Yeah. And the surgeon came over to me and she put her, she leaned down beside me and she put her hands on my arm and she said, I know this is a lot to handle. And she's trying to console me. And I said, mm-hmm. and I wasn't, I wasn't even crying. It was almost like a shot type mm-hmm. feeling. And I, I looked at her and I said, is he still alive? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, then I want him transferred and I want him to leave this hospital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He needs to go somewhere else. And at that point, that was it. I was on a mission. Yeah, and right. if you guys can't save him, then somebody else is going yeah. to because mm-hmm. that's not the answer that I'm accepting. Yep, right. And so I didn't make a single phone call. I, you know, we wow. we pushed yeah. and we pushed and we pushed, and the helicopter was there within an hour, and that's all we did from that on. It was like you're not going to get in my way. Even at Boston Children's, when they said, mm-hmm. you know, there was one point where I wanted him to go to Spalding. It's one of the best rehabs in the country for pediatrics, and mm-hmm. they said he's not he's not waking up enough. Like he doesn't have Mm -hmm. enough brain activity. He's not going to be able to participate. I went to Spalding myself and I met with the doctors and I met with the nurses and I begged and I Mm -hmm. said, I don't, I don't agree. And I think that he's going to get there. I just don't think he's had enough time. Mm -hmm. And I pushed and pushed until he got there. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Corbin, you got an awesome mom on your side, man. Yeah, you do. That's great. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. um, But, I want to talk to you about your book. Um, is the book mainly about Corbin's brain injury or is that all it's about or what? So the book is basically the journey. Um, okay. it's, okay. it starts on the day of the accident and what, what I guess what kind of happened was, um, I think it was a day or two after the accident, I was getting so many messages and phone calls and all, and I didn't want to leave Corbin's side and I didn't want to take the time but I wanted to update people at the same time. Um, so we had a cousin, Paul, who said, there's this great website called Caring Bridge, and you can write updates, and it's free, and people can sign up, and it will email them every time you post something. Oh, okay. And so mm-hmm. you can just do this mass update yeah. daily, weekly, whenever it works for you, and that's the way you can just connect with everybody. Hmm. And so um, we're from a really small town, Um we're pretty private, like, you know, we're, yeah. we kind of keep to ourselves and whatnot. But by the end, I ended up posting every day about Corbin's progress. Mm. And by the end, there was over 350,000 people that were viewing it. Yeah. Whoa. That's wow. uh, amazing. It's, it's crazy. We had people in other countries. It was, oh, it was man. incredible. Um, and so what happened was the book kind of follows those posts because. Yeah. Well, you that's know, I, the, it's the perfect opportunity to write a book. Like you, you already have you, the information yeah, out. You, you already, already have, have all of that out there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's true. I, I basically had, you know, the, the timeline and the whole guide for it. And so I guess the idea was, um, 
the posts were, I tried to keep them positive. Mm -hmm. I didn't put my breakdowns. I didn't, you know, because I tried to stay so strong through everything. But there was definitely times where I felt defeated. Yeah. Um, So if there was so much more. That's a natural to feel defeated. I mean, that's especially as a parent, you know, I like, yeah, that's. You know, there was, yeah, there was this one meeting that we went into, um, and it was just Corbin's dad and I, and we'd been divorced for five or six years. And, Mm -hmm. uh, but it was just him and I, and about 20 doctors, all the specialists that had been seeing him. And it was basically telling us he's not going to make it to Spalding. He, you need Mm -hmm. to find a long-term care facility. He's going to be in a bed the rest of his life, most likely because, and you know, you leave that meeting and you have, you're just, it sounds like horrible news but it, it's amazing his recovery you know mm-hmm. it is it is and it was like that was like a momentary breakdown and mm-hmm. then you pick yourself back up and you keep yep. moving yeah. and that's what we pick did yourself and back so up and call bullshit you yep. like that? I'm, exactly I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm moving forward yeah, yeah. No way. it was just yeah it was completely unacceptable answer for me mm. yeah. um yeah and so basically there was just a lot more to the story hmm yeah. You know, and for me, I guess my biggest thing for writing the book was when Corbin was going through this, I wasn't looking at medical reports and I wasn't searching the internet for those things. All mm-hmm. I was doing was searching for positive outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who'd been through something similar and it was okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I, I'll, I was just, it, if it can happen to somebody else, it can happen for him. And I just wanted, wanted to be, I was constantly searching for that positivity to keep me fighting mm-hmm. and being strong. And mm-hmm. so, my thought was if somebody, cause you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big believer in miracles and those type of things, but it really, everything that happened to him, you know, it can happen for other people. And mm-hmm. if his story can do that for somebody else, then it was worth sharing. Yeah. For sure. So I, I, one of the things I had to get done to me, um, I had my bone flap removed and, um, mm-hmm. so the pressure could have somewhere to go. Yep. But that surgery happened on my birthday, and mm. um, my mom says sh- how she felt that day was like the only thing she could think about was positive positivity, yeah. and yeah. Um, I think that's really important to have that state of mind when someone's going through something like that. Mm-hmm. Just think positive and. Um, of course, you have to also um, think about the reality sure, of the there's situation. Acceptance. There's yeah. acceptance involved but, too, but yeah, stay positive. Yeah, but that positivity can really do a lot. Mm-hmm. I think it does. It makes a huge difference. I remember when we were at Spalding, um, there was uh, LNA, a nursing assistant, who uh, she was the sweetest woman, and she came in and she looked at me and she said, you know, he's getting better so fast because of you and your family. Right. Yeah. And I said, I said, well, you know, I hope so. That's, you know, that's what we're trying to do. And she said, no, she goes, I've been doing this 30 years. Yeah. She said, and you, you know, people can recover the doctors mm-hmm. and the medicine, the surgeries, they will help you recover. She said, but when you have, when you're surrounded by this much love and this much positivity, mm-hmm. Right. That's when people thrive. Yeah. Yeah. That's she great. said, and she goes, the, the reason that he's doing like he's blowing everybody away um, is because he's surrounded by so much love and mm-hmm. positivity. Yeah. I, I believe that uh, I do too. 100%. 100%. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. We didn't, I mean, I didn't even allow the doctors when they would come in, especially the neurologist. They never had good news at children's. It was like they weren't, he wasn't doing what they wanted him. They, he, what they weren't mm-hmm. seeing what they wanted to see. And, um, at one point, I got to the point where I was like, "You, we can talk about this outside of the room. You're yeah. not saying this in front of. Yeah, he's exactly. unconscious, but I don't want. I don't know if he can hear you, and I don't want him hearing anything that's not positive." Well, when I was in a coma, like I could hear um, people talking, and you even remember some yeah, of this stuff, right? Yep. And so it's amazing, like that um, premon- premonition you had about not letting him be around when the doctor was saying that negative stuff yeah was probably 
like a great thing to do. Oh yeah, for sure. That's what I didn't know. You know, they say that your hearing's the last thing to go. You know, I read all these things and I didn't know what he could hear. Um, but I guess I definitely believed that mm-hmm. he could hear. Um, I, I brought, I always had his favorite music playing. 